Alrighty, transmission pan. We're dropping it on a 2013 GMC Yukon XL 1500. Pretty similar for all the Yukons and the Suburbans and everything in this time range. Okay, fast forward. Every that I've seen doing this has a lift, a four foot crowbar, and a buddy. Okay? Now, if you know anything about Sean for Big Blocks Garage, I do all my shit by myself, okay? So when I'm in a situation where you got an oil pan that just barely won't clear the exhaust, okay? And then not only are you fighting that, but you got the coolant lines that you got to fight right in the front, even though they could have moved them up an inch. I get a little pissed off, okay? But never fair. Sean for Big Blocks is here, okay? Now, we're kind of rigged, but I want to show you what I did. I took my jack, and I got a Gorilla Bar, okay? I will take the measurements when I'm done. But as you can see, I got it wedged in there. And it's not super, super secure, or at least I don't think it is. And I got my jack jacking it up. It's a pain in the ass because the jack as you jack up wants to go to the right. But there's like a sense of feel where you got to jack it real quick. So it starts pushing up pressure before it wants to just slide. Okay. But it worked. It did the trick. The main thing you got to remember is that when you put that crowbar in there, you want it just barely on the exhaust pipe, okay? If you go too far and it sticks up, then it takes away your clearance for the oil pan. You'll see what I mean when you put it in there. Just barely. Like to the point where any other time it'd be counterintuitive because it could slip off. You could kind of see what I mean. But I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to hope I get lucky and this won't shift and I'm going to go ahead and clean up my pan. It's a reusable gasket, so I'm going to clean my gasket and I'm going to go ahead and do that filter. Plus, it's got a uh, replacement gasket or grommet, whatever you want to call it. And I know a lot of people skip that part because it kind of sucks, but I'm going to go ahead and do that to show you how to do it. I'm not going to do it on this video. Look at my video on doing it on a 2006 Pontiac Grand Prix. It's the same procedure. But I just wanted to show you that. You know, I don't have a lift. I do have a four foot crowbar, but good luck trying to fit that under your car. Unless if you put it 20 feet off the ground. And I'm not going to ask a friend. Never in my life have I ever had to ask a friend to help me change transmission fluid. Now, don't get me wrong, I got a brother-in-law who just make his wife do it, but I'm not that guy either. So, hopefully this helps somebody out, kind of gives you an idea. Uh, when I edit this, I'll put in the specs. Basically, uh, how long it is, and if my sticker's still on there, if there's a part number. But it's it's the Gorilla Bar. Okay, I guess I got a splice of B-roll in. Probably the most important part of this video, right? Okay, so. The crowbar that I used. It's very, barely visible, but it's Roughneck. Number 64-436. 64-436. For reference. It is. Now you can see it for yourself. It's just, just shy of 36 inches. So that's the bar I used, okay? Then as far as how high I lifted it, I'm on a perfectly level surface. And if I go to the rocker step, 
I'm a little bit more than 17 and a quarter inches. Damn close. So I'd say if you jack up to where you're 17 and a quarter inches and you got a pry bar, that's like the one I showed, it should be good to go. Now I'll see with one hand here. Because I don't have the can. Oh, there goes the knee on the jack. That's always a good feeling. Oh, that hurt. Okay. Yeah, don't bang your knee on the jack. So remember, when you go to put this in there. Oh, that hurt. You're going to just barely put it in. Like that. Okay? And then, you push it until everything's level. And now see how it's propped up on the floor? It's square with the vehicle. And then you come up probably, take your jack and see roughly how close you can tuck into the left. Set up a pair of vice grips like my finger so you got that upside down V. That chevron looking thing. And then you jack up right there. And on the back there, you want to see, you want to jack up until that's about three inches off the ground. Now, granted, you're going to have the pan loose already. So, I mean, you could always, you know, jack it up a little bit, try it. Jack up, up a little bit, try it. But it's about three inches. You get that thing three inches off the ground and you're going to be good to go. Just remember that you have quite a bit that you got to clear. You got to pull that thing probably, what, at least eight inches forward? And look what GM did for you. They had to route the trans lines like that. So, I mean, you're going to have to come down with it enough to clear those trans lines, which means you're going to have to jack it up that much higher. Had those trans lines been moved back three inches, you probably wouldn't have even had the jacket that much. And again, you could have a friend do it. They could sit and crowbar it, but I'll tell you what, you're probably not going to get the leverage with the 36-inch crowbar laying on the ground as these guys that are doing it with lifts. So hopefully that helps you out because, again, this is one of those shitty things where they tried to engineer it for job security, and we don't want to let them do that. All righty, I decided to continue the video. So, here's the situation, okay? I'm going to probably cut this up and uh, post it as an isolated video, too. Now, when I got my truck, it already had 100,000 miles on it, okay? And I could tell the transmission fluid had never been flushed. Or I should say swapped out. But it was really, really bad. It was like syrup. But the trans was still shifting good. So I knew I'd be in good shape. So what I did was I had the transmission flushed. And I know people are going to say, you know, oh, you shouldn't do that, blah, 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 blah. But it was so bad that I wanted the chance to flush in order to make sure I cleared all the shit out of the torque converter, okay? After I did that, my game plan was to come back, drop the pan, and swap out the filter, okay? Now, I haven't done that. It's been probably two months, and I just haven't gotten around to it. It's been low priority. I've been busy. And now all of a sudden, my family and I are going on vacation. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go knock that shit out. So here I am late at night, right? Because I work at night because it's hot as fuck in the south. And I don't have AC in my shop. So where am I going with all this? First off, it would be real nice to have an extra pan so that if I screw up, I got an emergency option. And second off, I could kind of get a feel with the second pan for the steel. I'm an amateur welder. I got a Millermatic 211. It's a really nice welder, but I, again, I'm an amateur welder. I don't know exactly what steel this is, okay? But here's my plan. Let me back up. No part number on this pan. It's definitely a GM pan. I looked all over. 
no part number because I've heard there can be little variances depending on your exhaust and all that shit. And based on how tight this was, I could I get that. Okay. Here's my game plan. A while back, here's what I did. You can go to your local auto parts store. You get a replacement oil drain pan. Okay. And see how it's got the nice gasket in there. And I like these because you can always get them. So when that gasket starts to deteriorate, you buy a new one. I think it was like four or five bucks. This is it right here. Metric 14-1.5, okay? Let me try to give you a good part number on there because you may want to duplicate this. Then what I did, it's really, really, really hard to find a nut, okay? That's that thread pitch. Go ahead, try to find it. Go to all your hardware stores, tractor supply, Try pulling one out your ass. Try to find it. So good old pal, old buddy, old eBay, right? You can always find everything on eBay. I'll post the link for the guy now. But this is who I got it from. And he gave it to me in that bag, okay? Now the first bad thing is it's zinc coated. I really wanted to find a natural steel one, and I couldn't because you can't weld it. You got to grind the zinc off, okay? So not only do you have to grind it and keep it clean, but here's my game plan, okay? You could tell there's a spot where GM like was like, oh, yeah, you know, I think I'd like to maybe have a drain right there one day. But you know what? We can't spend the extra $2.50 per customer. So you just got this spot, okay? But it's perfect. The nut goes upside down. It gets welded right there. On my truck, I got plenty of clearance. And then you got this, right? So you take your nut, you line it up how you want it. You go ahead and take a magic marker and you make a dot in the center. You use a spring-loaded starette or starette style punch And you punch a hole, okay? Then you drill out the hole. Then you come back, you, cl you, you, you grind off all the zinc where you're going to be welding. You grind that all clean right there. And you weld it on, and voila! You don't have to go through the pain in the ass of doing this. You just drain your fluid first. You know, if the old 700 R4s and the 4060s and... You know, you just go buy a new pan. You know, Pioneer makes a $30 pan. It works great. Steel, good for a stocker. Cannot find it for the fucking 4L60E. 4L60E. 6L80E. Why? I don't know. You tell me why. Okay, I take it back. I found one, and it was uh, an aluminum one, and it, they wanted $280. It was the only one I found. Granted, this was a few months ago when I racked my brains out, but I couldn't find it. But, there's the cleaned up pan. Look at that. It's like it's made for it. Doesn't bump into the filter or anything. I should actually just make sure that that's not a stanchion for the filter to rust on. But I'm pretty sure it's not. So the dilemma now... Do I want to take the chance of welding that and fucking it up and then maybe having a hard time finding a trans pan since I don't have a spare? Or do I want to wait or do I want to take it to a welder and bitch out and just know it's done right or at least hope it's done right? I mean, what if my welds aren't that good? You know what I mean? And I'm driving and all of a sudden the sucker heats up and it just lets loose and I'm pissing all my trans fluid on the highway. I got a 750 mile one way trip coming up, you know, just shy of 1500 round, no 1600 round trip. But, uh, 
Yeah, I'm debating. So, but I'm I'm trying what I'm trying to do right now is decide if I have the nerve, but I'm giving you all the idea in YouTube land because I don't think I've seen anybody do that. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, Mr. Gasket and them, they make the little the the little drill it out and the screw in and the yada yada and the yada yada. And it's like, yeah, they do. But guess what? Those leak. They never hold. They leak. And that sucks. There's nothing worse than a leaky transmission. You know what I mean? Now, it is another option to drill out that hole, put that in, and then down the road have it welded in. See, I put myself in a bind here. I should have done this when I could have let it sit for a few days and figure it out. But, oh, well, I'm just mumbling at this point. So, hopefully that helped you out. Okay, <clears throat> so the balls are growing a little bit bigger. I went ahead and I took my grinder, my air grinder. And I pretty generously grinded all six sides, rounded the corners a little bit. And I did that flat part right there. Nope. I lied. Oh, yeah, yeah, that flat part, because that's my gasket surface. I don't want to mess it up too much, because it wouldn't be a bad idea when I take that bolt out on the vehicle. Kind of like plumbing, you know? Grip that part while you put the uh, socket on there. But I think I'm going to have the balls to do it. So now what I'm debating, do I pre-drill the hole, or do I weld it on there? And then drill the hole. Because I can under drill it. I don't have to hit the threads. It's not going to take much to go through that steel. And if I do mess up. Seeing as though I don't blow through. I'm good to go. And even if I blew through. I could probably rig it if I had to. Now the biggest pain in the ass. Is I've been doing. Uh, remodeling my bathroom. Which means. I got the old table saw out in a big fucking mess. And my welder's somewhere back there in that pile behind that Casio keyboard. And I need to get it over here because I got to figure out how I'm going to clamp that on. If I had a big old welder C-clamp, that would work. You know, I could put a piece of a straight bar, flat stock, underneath it and then just, you know, clamp. But... I don't have a lot of welding clamps yet. Like I said, I'm an amateur welder. I went ahead and hit that with the uh, wire wheel. I'm assuming that's not zinc plated. I guess we'll know if I go to weld it and uh, it doesn't stick. I mean, my attitude is if I weld it and it passes the compressed air test and I hammer it and it doesn't pop off, I think we're good to go. But see, also, if I don't drill a hole and it does go horribly wrong, I can go ahead and put the leaky tiki Mr. Gasket on there. Because I can get that locally at the parts store for like 20 or 30 bucks. Fucking rip off. Versus that, which was cheap. So, I got to figure out how I'm going to chuck this up. Alrighty, boys and girls. Instead of using my flat stock, I used a 12 by half inch poplar. I'm overhanging and hoping that's enough for me to get ground. I'm using a C-clamp. Yes, I don't have a welding table yet. That's future Sean for big box. Getting the welding table and all that. Got to get caught up on other shit first. But it's holding it. I want it angled a certain way, and of course, the more you twist it, everything twists. But I'm on there pretty tight. Now, what I'm really hoping is that the wire wheel on the pan, I mean, this pan's not rusted out. So it's like, unless if that's stainless steel. <laughs> oh, like I said, I don't know my metals. Don't let that be stainless steel. That's going to fail miserably. And that, this is why I'm not going to drill a hole. I'm just going to see if I can get a bead to stick. You know what I mean? If I can, I grind it flush. No harm done. But, uh... 
dug out the Miller-Matic. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up. This is so stupid. You don't do this the night before a vacation when you don't know how to weld. At least when you don't know how to weld this. Yeah, okay, here goes nothing. So I'm going to try the auto settings. I got 0 .03 wire. MIG steel. C25. Voltage at 6. We're going to see how that goes, okay? I mean, that is pretty thin. But we're going to see how it goes. You know what I mean? We'll clip our end clean. And we'll try to tack that. My biggest worry is when I was grinding the uh, nut, my goggles kept steaming up. So I'm really hoping my uh, welding helmet doesn't, ste doesn't steam up. Because that would suck. So, here goes nothing. Okay, I went for it. As you can tell, it's a completely amateur weld. Initially, I went around it. And those weren't too bad. But then when I decided I wanted to start trying to, like, fill it in. It got a little bit crazier. But I believe I was getting good penetration. And I, I wanted to make sure I did a lot of buildups. I don't care as much about how it looks. I mean, I could always Bondo bucket it. But you kind of get an idea. It was definitely, for being an amateur welder, having to go in on that angle, it was really hard. Because, like, as I tried to do it, it, like, wanted the arc onto these sides here. But here's my theory, okay? If this works and I don't leak, then if you guys do it, you can do the same thing. And if you actually know how to weld and make it look good, it looked actually a lot better than that before I started trying to pull all that in. I was just being paranoid. As far as the penetration, there's my penetration. So I think setting it at six was good. You can see on the top there, that was like the hardest part for me to get. So it was like, it was just awkward. And it just started to probably bubble through a little, but I don't have any holes. But here's what I do know. It's not going anywhere. I don't feel any give. So I'm going to go for it. Time to drill a hole. Okay, I got my hole drilled. <clears throat> Ended up going with uh, 31 fourths. I did it from the top, and it gave me just enough room to go through without hitting my threads. And I basically, I was initially going to just make a nick with it, use my punch on the nick, and then go from the bottom. But I decided to be ballsy and it worked out. So, there you go. That's what I ended up with. I got to clean that up a little bit, but... As you can see... Nothing warped, and I didn't screw up my threads. 10 millimeter on that bolt. And there you go. It actually, it's, it's rock solid, so as long as I don't leak,
<clears throat> that's holding it down from my elbow. But it, it just feels rock solid. It looks like shit. And I'm going to have to spray some paint on there so it doesn't rust. But it works. You know? I'll probably get another pan. And what I'll do is uh, next time I do a filter change, I'll do another one. But I'll have it professionally welded. But I would say... I tried it. I almost whisked out. But it worked out. Actually, it was 15, 30 seconds. I lied. Dawned on me that I want to clean up. And that I left that one out. But the one that was still in the drill was that one. Okay, so there's always got to be a plan B, right? I put it on, and I put my uh, first couple of quarts in. And pretty soon, shortly thereafter, I started getting that five-second drip. Drip. Five seconds later, drip. And it was probably, if you're looking at it as a clock, I'd say probably between six and seven o'clock which just so happened to be when you flip it over where you don't see the uh, the good penetration, which is also the reason why I built everything up so much, trying to band-aid that, and it didn't work. But uh, good old JB Weld. It would have been nice to use the quick set, but it's not as strong, and it's not as temperature resistant. So there's plan B. We'll see if it works. I think it will. If all I'm fighting is a drip that's not under pressure, I don't see why it wouldn't. I just would have rather have had a full 24 hours with it. So it's four to six hours set time. I'll wait six hours. I'll put it on, get the pan on, get everything on. And then uh, tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and fill it up and I'll cross my fingers. But I guess the good news is it hides my ugly weld job a little bit. Granted, JB Weld's hard to spread. It's hard to get it real smooth. But I think I got a nice little patch. And I was able to choke the neck of that uh, nut that I welded on. So, again, if you're a skilled welder or you take it into a skilled welder, it would probably, probably would have worked right the first time. It's a strong weld, I could tell you that much. I was sitting there after I took it off this last time, and I was hammering it pretty hard, and I mean, it wasn't budging. Like, I definitely don't mind putting the bolt on and off without uh, securing the base, the base nut. So, we shall see what happens. Alrighty, here we go. We're going to try to get rid of that drip. So we're sitting at about probably 20 hours cure time on a JB Weld Classic. Kind of give you a look. Okay, <clears throat> I got another change I'm going to make. I decided I wanted to use a different pan bolt. What I wasn't liking about this one is not only do you have to worry about pinching, even lubricated, I'd worry about this one pinching. But I realized it's grooved into the head of that bolt. And I just don't like that style, especially just the fitment on what I'm doing. So what I did, I got this one, okay? And there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, you'll see there's like 10 different options. Dorman 090-053CD. But if you go to your uh, help section or wherever your hold on or wherever your auto parts store has them, you'll see them. But see what I like about this? Not only is it cheaper to reuse these gaskets, not reuse. I mean to replace them. But I think it's going to work better. 
you know, rather than that pinching style that to me is a little bit too soft when you're torquing it, this is like a neoprene or equivalent material. And see how it's grooved kind of like a uh, brake caliper when you put the uh, hydraulic line on? I think it's going to seal better and it can't pinch. Most importantly, it can't pinch and it's got a much wider footprint on a flush mounting surface. So just for a little bit of added insurance, that's what I'm going to go with right there. And then, for future maintenance, I went ahead and just bought it now so I'd have it. There's your replacements. Cheaper than buying the whole bolt. So let me go ahead and pop that on. Okay. It's a little squishier than I thought it would be. I didn't over torque it, but it's really snug. With the other one, I actually torqued it pretty tight. But I'm just throwing that out there. You know, the world's solid. So uh, let's put some fluid in there and see if it holds. Okay, that's four quarts of synthetic automatic transmission fluid. As of the moment, we have 100% success. Absolutely no leaks, no drips, no anything. So I put the four quarts in last time and I had that drip, drip, drip. Well, it wasn't that quick, but quick enough that it bothered me. And if you live in a place where they do emissions, where you can't have anything dripping, that would be a problem. So, not the most beautiful, but it works, and it's rock solid. I mean, that nut's not coming off. So, if you were to weld it properly, or have it welded properly, you'd be in good shape. Uh, I looked closer into that aftermarket pan. You know, that $300 one, it wouldn't even clear. It doesn't even have the notch for the exhaust. So, I mean, pretty much this is your only route. You know, unless if you go for that half-assed piece of shit that I guarantee you is going to leak. This is probably the best way to do it, just with a better weld. Uh, my JB weld isn't the smoothest job. I tried to kind of let it self-level. But, I mean, it's, it's hard. That stuff's tacky. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop this, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, top off the fluid, and I should be good to go. Okay, I just got all topped off. So basically what I did, I filled it up. I put the initial four quarts in before I started it up, okay? Then I wanted to get enough fluid that at least it registered to the bottom of the uh, fill range, <clears throat> the safe operating range, before I started the vehicle up. For me to get to that point was five quarts five quarts and I was safe to start it up okay then I started it up naturally the level dropped a little bit as it started circulating what I did was I filled it in half quart increments I use a measuring cup because I want to be precise and I want to know for the next time I do this how much I put in there to save time Two cups is half a quart, okay? So the initial four was a whole bottle. I use this Valvoline, okay? Basically one US gallon is uh, four quarts. I put the four in, then I put in another half and another half. Then I was able to register something on the dipstick right at the low, low end of the uh, operating range on the dipstick. Then I started it up, I added a half, a half, a half, and then I added, I want to say at about this point, when it started kind of getting close, I got in the vehicle and I shifted through the gears. I put it in each gear and I revved it with my foot holding the brake down. Now of course this is like the uh, paddle shift style, because it's the 6L80E. So what I had to do is put it in manual and then hit minus till I got down the one. Rev it, rev it, put it on two, hitting the plus button. Rev it, rev it, put it on three. Rev it, rev it, four. Rev it, rev it, five. Rev it, rev it, back to six. Put another half a quart in. At this point I was like, I'd say between a half and three quarters on the fill mark just below 
top fill point at engine running operating temperature okay at that point I checked it and the trans was at 106 degrees I added another one quarter and that brought me literally to about three quarters of the whole range on the dipstick then I drove it around the block and I did a bunch of power runs flooring it from a stop to 60 slowing down flooring it from a stop to 60 slowing down and I had the air running full blast to put it in a perspective I was sitting at like I said 106 degrees at idle after at least five minutes of idle it's uh, 82 here in Arkansas and the heat index is between 105 and 110 after doing my power runs I got it up to 140 I then checked and my dipstick is right on it's at the max fill line engine hot transmission hot at running conditions so that's how I came up with the uh, it took me seven and a quarter total quarts of and I use synthetic automatic transmission fluid so I would say you are safe putting in seven running it checking it and you should be somewhere in that range i'd say if you put six and a half in right off the bat before you start it you're definitely safe but generally speaking if your oil pan looks like this you should be good to go ahead and uh start with seven initial and then tweak it the only other thing i want to show you you know atf is kind of messy right and you got a real long dipstick and it's kind of a full arms reach back what I do is I use one of these black funnels and I take one rag and I put it there and what I do is I take another rag I use this to wipe off my dipstick and whenever I take the funnel out I stretch my arm so that when I pull it out it doesn't drip anywhere and then I set it right there while I'm checking then when I go to put it back in, I put this on the end again, and I feed the funnel back in, and then I top it off and I do that procedure until it's where I want it. So hopefully that helps you out. I know there's a lot of these on the road, and anytime we can save a, a mechanic a few minutes from you know experience-based tips, I know it helps. So thank you for watching, and uh, have a good day. Well, it's the one year anniversary of my uh, <coughs> oil pan bolt job. Still doesn't look beautiful, my amateur roll job, but it works. One year later and it's been rock solid. Too bad it's taken me this long to get around the editing of the video.